Welcome back, Modern Drummers. It's Brandon from Drum Mechanics. We are talking about rethinking warm-ups, and we're going to talk about your hands today. Now, again, there are a few things we're going to touch on. We're going to talk about potentiation and something called an isometric contraction. We're going to talk about how to prepare your hands and increase range of motion with using your hands and your sticks. I'm looking forward to showing you. Let's dive in. Now, as we get into the actual practical application, it's important for us to start talking about what is an isometric contraction. Because we're going to use isometric contractions as the vehicle to actually help potentiate and stimulate these muscles. Remember, we are not passive stretching because putting an excessive amount of force into our muscles can be stressful and actually downregulate motor output and decrease our ability to produce force and increase the risk of injury. Now, in the potentiation world, we can do concentric, eccentric, and isometric contraction to help stimulate this process. But we're going to start with isometrics just so that way there is a decreased risk of injury and frankly, it's just easier. So an isometric contraction is where you are pushing into something and there is no motion. It's a tug of war between two ends and no one is winning the fight. Both sides are staying in the same position. So what is an example of an isometric contraction? Well, an isometric contraction and the wrist example could be when I bring my wrist back actively and I put my hand on the back here and I push into my hand. So this bottom hand is applying force into my top hand and my top hand is acting like an immovable object, which creates a contraction on the top of this side of my joint axis. Now for today, there will be four wrist examples, but it's important for me to tell you that these examples are arbitrary. I've chosen these four because they are simple, common, and there's nothing really complicated about them. But if you find a way that you like to do these contractions on your own, that's better for you and you feel the muscles better, that's great. One of the things that will be important, we'll touch on a little bit later, is that you can actually feel the muscles that are involved. So the first one that we're going to look at the article is supination and pronation. So if you were to hold a drumstick in your hand and you were to turn your palm all the way up, that's called supination. And if you were to turn all the way down in, that's called pronation. Now an easy way of thinking of this is if I were holding a bowl of soup, if I were to pour that bowl of soup, that's pronation. And if I were to hold that bowl of soup up and not pour it, that's supination. So when we're supinating, we've got soup. When we're pronating, we're pouring the soup. Now, what's nice about this is the supinator muscles are all on the outside of the arm here, generally speaking, and a lot of the pronator muscles are on the inside. So between these two, we're stimulating almost all of the muscles below the forearm. Interestingly enough, too, as, as we do this with the stick that we're about to do, our fingers are, end up working in the extremes of these motions as well. So how I like to do the supination is I'll hold the stick like so, and I'll turn it all the way out. Now, if I don't have a drum set, what I'll do is actually use my hand as resistance and put my hand on the outside of the stick and my stick will continue trying to push into my hand. So this hand is trying to do supination, but I'm unable to because this hand is acting as resistance. Therefore, all of the supinators start to contract. So if I were to do that, I would suggest you try to do it with a light to medium force to start. Turn all the way out and push out for three seconds. Three, two, one. That's it. Now try to repeat that a few times and you'll find with subsequent contractions that you may be, able, may be able to actually go further. Ah, I increase range of motion without stretching. And while I'm here, I can actually contract in these new positions. Remember I said earlier that as you do this potentiation thing, you'll actually get better at doing it? Well, as you can see here, if I pronate like so, this is how much range of motion I have currently. And for the second strategy, I'm going to use my hand as resistance again, and I'm going to continue trying to pronate, and I'm going to turn all the way in, strictly keeping my elbow at my side, and while I'm trying to turn in, I'm feeling this flexor wad here contract. Three, two, one. Now here's what's cool. I'm going to take my hand away and watch this. A few seconds later, if I try to turn now, I've actually picked up some range of motion. Here's what's cool. You will actually increase flexibility this way, you'll actually increase flexibility this way via muscular contractions, which means that you'll be able to keep it. Now, here's what's cool. If you don't have a drumstick, you can actually do this without a drumstick. Turn your palm out, grab your hand, and continue trying to turn out. Ultimately, the same supinators are working. I like using the drumstick because it actually allows me to have to work harder and I get to produce more external torque into this. There's just more distance from the joint axis. So we've got the hand model, the stick model, 
And if you've got drums or a hi-hat cymbal, you can actually do it with the hi-hat. Turn all the way out and push into the hi-hat and continue pushing to get that contraction. Same with the floor tom. Turn them all the way in. If you can get to the floor tom, push into it and then come back. Try to keep your shoulder motion stable, but if you need to move a little bit to get there, it's not a big deal. The last two are really simple. Now, I'm going to do it with the grip technique that I use. If you have a different grip, I'd suggest that you try doing this warm up like that. So I tend to have more of a palms down grip. So if I were going to do that, and that's what I've suggested in the article, frankly, just because it stimulates a lot of muscles, but if you have a French grip, you can do it like that too. So with this palms down grip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to come all the way back into extension. And like before, I'm going to use my hand on the stick and produce some resistance with my other hand. This hand is acting as an immovable object. I'm pushing back into my hand and getting that contraction across the top of my forearm. Three, two, one, relax. Come out of the position. Repeat that. Push back. Three, two, one, relax. And I would repeat that three times. The next one is going into flexion. This is the only one that requires some motion because if you notice, you have quite a bit of wrist flexion available. Now, on the drum set, we really never go to this place. And in the ergonomic series we did, we talk about one of the reasons why as far as joint forces go and also how our drum set is set up. But I like to still stimulate my muscle in the shortest position because you get a really good contraction. So there's two ways we could do that. One, if I were doing it down here, I can flex my wrist and I can actually push into the drum and use the drum as an external device. Or I can bring my elbow up just a little bit and again, use my hand as an external support. Here's the nice thing. We've spent six to 10 minutes talking about this via this video, but reality is, is that each one of these only takes nine seconds to do, maybe 12 with some rest in between. And that if you do this efficiently with both sides, it takes you about two minutes to potentiate all of your wrist muscles. It's as easy as while you're setting up your studio gear, stimulating them, stimulating, 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 and getting those muscles to contract. So give that a shot and let me know what you think. But again, remember, if you find a better way of doing this for you, like doing it with just your hand, doing this against the bottom of your hi-hat, doesn't really matter. It's really about getting that contraction and using an appropriate amount of force following the rules we're going to talk about in a second. For this process to be successful, there are a few things that are going to be important, and I've outlined five rules in the article that we're going to touch on. Now, these rules are not protocols, but they are great guidelines to help you get the most success out of this warm-up. The first one is staying within your active range of motion. And as we've talked about several times through the ergonomic series and now, your active range of motion is the amount of motion that you have voluntary control over. So if I pull my hand up, this is active. If I push myself further, this is passive. Passive means an external force is pushing me there. So we want to stay within your active range of motion so we're using your muscles and we're protecting your joint structures. Number two is to avoid pain. So as we're going through this, if you feel some discomfort with your hands or the sticks, make sure that you modify the motion so it doesn't hurt. For example, if you bring your hand back all the way into extension and you may have this active range of motion, but it hurts right here, it's okay. Bring it back a little bit and potentiate it from here. Don't cause pain. If you keep pushing the pain, it's only gonna get worse. The third point is to avoid fatigue. We definitely wanna make sure that we don't cause any muscular fatigue. The potentiation effect that we've talked about that increases motor performance is really based off of the last activation contraction. But that process is diminished once there is an amount of fatigue. So try not to fatigue the muscles yet. This is a warm up, not a workout. The fourth point is to try to feel the muscles. So you don't need to be an anatomy person to know this, but if you pull your hand back, there's a bunch of muscles on the top of the forearm, the extensors that we're going to be using for the extension potentiation, and we're doing the flexion one and the hands down, there's all the flexor muscles. So again, you don't need to know the anatomy of these, but if you pull your hand back and you create an isometric contraction, I want you to try to feel the muscles here. If you're feeling just the joint, that's not going to be very helpful because this is all about the muscles, the things that move you. So practice feeling those muscles. And you'll find that as you start to do this, you'll more readily be able to feel them. So practice feeling them the first time and then see over a week, a month, a year, how does that contraction change? The last point that we're gonna talk about this month, the fifth one, is that as you do this isometric contraction, 
As I described earlier, don't push too hard. We'll do a light to moderate force just to get the contraction going. But if you do research on the post-activation potentiation phenomenon, you'll see that the greater amount of force you can expose yourself to without causing pain or fatigue, the greater the response. So as you're getting more advanced and you do this extension potentiation, do the same amount of time, push for three seconds, five seconds, what have you, but try to push harder back into your hand to increase that contraction. Over time, that'll actually help you to warm up faster and get more effect from the potentiation response. All right, healthy drummers, that's it for this month. Hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please email Modern Drummer or me and let me know. I'd be happy to help you guys. Stay tuned. And again, this is Brandon, your biomechanics and fitness resource for the Modern Drummer. Thanks for watching.